In a small, bustling town called Ikorodu, there was a hairdresser named Kimi. Everyone in the neighborhood knew Kimi's salon. It was a bright place filled with all sorts of colorful hair products, soft chairs, and sweet smells. But there was something strange about her salon. Kimi never allowed her customers to use mirrors. Whenever a customer asked, Kimi, can I see how my hair looks? She would smile and say, no need to worry, dear. I know exactly what you want. Kimi was good at what she did. No one could deny that. Her customers always left her salon with perfect hairstyles, and somehow, they felt they could only look that good if they returned to her. Yet, they didn't know why. One day, a young woman named BC walked into Kimi's salon. BC was excited to have her hair styled because she had heard so much about Kimi's skills. But when she saw that there were no mirrors, she felt uneasy. How come you don't have any mirrors, Kimi? BC asked, trying to smile but feeling uncomfortable. Kimi chuckled softly, her eyes twinkling. Oh, mirrors only distract from the process. Just relax, my dear. BC, a little unsure, nodded and let Kimi begin working on her hair. As Kimi combed and snipped, she hummed softly, her hands moving skillfully through BC's hair. But what BC didn't know was that Kimi was quietly snipping small strands of her hair and setting them aside. You see, Kimi had a secret. She believed that by keeping a piece of her customer's hair, she could cast a spell to make them return again and again. She had jars filled with hair from all her customers, and each time someone new came, she would secretly add a piece of their hair to her collection. Time passed, and every single person who visited Kimi's salon couldn't stay away for long. They felt a strange pull, an urge to return to her salon, even if they had no real reason to. It was like Kimi had some magical hold over them. But one day, something unexpected happened. BC, who had become a regular customer, started feeling sick. Each time she left Kimi's salon, she felt more tired and weaker, as if something was being taken from her. Her friends noticed her change. 2. BC, are you okay? Her friend, Tola, asked. You look tired all the time. Maybe you should take a break from Kimi's salon. BC hesitated. The thought of not going to Kimi's salon made her feel panicky, but she didn't understand why. She decided to talk to another friend, who knew a bit about strange charms and spells. BC, I think Kimi might be doing something to you and the other customers, her friend whispered. Maybe she's using something of yours to keep you attached to her salon. BC was shocked. Could it be true? She felt a chill run down her spine. She knew she had to find out the truth. The next time BC went to Kimi's salon, she waited until Kimi went to the back room to get more hair cream. Quickly, she searched the shelves and drawers, her heart pounding. Then, hidden behind some old bottles, she found them. Jars filled with small, neatly labeled bundles of hair. Her heart sank when she saw her name on one of the jars. Just then, Kimi returned. Her smile faded when she saw BC holding the jar with her hair in it. What? What are you doing with my hair, Kimi? BC's voice was shaky but firm. Kimi's face turned pale, but she tried to laugh it off. Oh, it's just a little keepsake nothing to worry about. But BC didn't believe her. She took her jar and ran out of the salon, her mind racing with questions. What was Kimi really up to? Why was she keeping all that hair? And soon, whispers began to spread through Ikorodu. BC ran straight to her friend Tola's house, her heart still pounding. When she arrived, she showed Tola the jar of hair with her name on it. Tola's eyes widened. I knew something was wrong. Tola whispered. She must be using some kind of charm. That's why everyone keeps going back to her salon. Word quickly spread across Ikorodu. 
The neighbors were shocked, and some were furious. Many women realized they, too, had been feeling strange after visiting Kimi's salon. The community decided that they couldn't stay silent any longer. Together, they planned to confront Kimi and get to the bottom of this mystery. The next morning, the streets were buzzing with whispers and rumors. Kimi, however, was completely unaware of the storm gathering around her. She went about her day as usual, preparing her salon and expecting her regular customers to stroll in. But instead of customers, a large crowd formed outside her salon, and BC stood at the front with her jar of hair clutched tightly in her hand. Kimi! BC called out, her voice steady. We need to talk. Kimi's smile faltered when she saw the crowd. But she quickly tried to regain her composure. Oh, BC, you're back. And look at everyone else. Come in, come in. No, BC said firmly. We're not coming in until you tell us the truth. Why are you keeping our hair in jars? Kimi's eyes darted from person to person, seeing the anger and suspicion on their faces. She knew she couldn't hide any longer. Her shoulders slumped, and she let out a deep sigh. All right, Kimi said, her voice shaking slightly. Yes, I kept your hair. But it wasn't to harm anyone, I promise. I just... I just didn't want anyone to leave me. I wanted my salon to be successful, to keep you all coming back. What you did was wrong, Kimi, Tola said, her voice filled with disappointment. You tricked us, and you didn't even give us a choice. Tears began to fill Kimi's eyes as she realized the harm she had caused. I'm so sorry, she whispered. I was so afraid of being alone, of losing my business. I didn't know any other way. BC looked at Kimi, feeling a mixture of anger and sadness. She remembered the way she had once trusted Kimi, how much she had admired her skill and charm. But now, she could only feel betrayed. Kimi, it's not too late to make things right, BC said, her voice softer now. Return everyone's hair and promise never to use these tricks again. Kimi nodded, wiping her eyes. She went into her salon and began handing out the jars of hair to each person. The women took back their hair, feeling a sense of relief and freedom as they did. Kimi felt ashamed but also strangely lighter, as though a heavy weight had been lifted from her. As the crowd dispersed, Kimi stood alone in front of her salon, realizing that she would have to work hard to rebuild the trust she had lost. The women of Ikorodu may not come back to her salon, but she was determined to find a new path, one built on honesty, without tricks or charms. And from that day forward, Kimi kept her salon open, but now with mirrors on every wall, so her customers could always see the truth of her work.